On this episode, I will teach you shortcut keys that can help you edit faster in DaVinci Resolve. In a previous video, which I will link to, I covered how to automate audio in Resolve, highlighting essential shortcut keys for efficient workflow on the Fairlight tab. Additionally, I created another video focusing on shortcuts for copying and pasting effects and color grading clips on the timeline, as well as nodes on the color page. Combining the information from this episode with those videos or future ones will provide you with a comprehensive, if not complete, list of shortcuts for an efficient workflow in your editing career with DaVinci Resolve. Let's begin. For the following shortcut keys, I will state the PC shortcut keys followed by the Mac shortcut keys. Control Z or Command Z. This is undo. It undoes what you just did. Control Shift Z or Command Shift Z. This is redo. It redoes what you undid. Control S or Command S saves your progress. Control C or Command C copies selected clips. Control V or Command V pastes at the playhead. Control X or Command X cuts selected clips but leaves a space behind. Backspace deletes a clip leaving an empty space. Delete ripple deletes a clip from the timeline. This is like the cut command I just mentioned, but closes the space by shifting the timeline to the left. This works as intended for deleting a column of the timeline selected, but be careful with stacked tracks. If only one clip is selected, deleting it will cause Resolve to delete the column of the timeline around the clip you deleted, then collapses clips to the left within the column of the deleted clip according to the largest clip within that column. This may sound a little confusing and technical, but this is probably more relevant for users with complex timeline structures. For about 95% of everyone, deleting just ripple deletes. As an extension to this delete command, Control shift left bracket or command shift left bracket will split the clip at the playhead and delete the clip to the left, while control shift right bracket or command shift right bracket splits and cuts the clip to the right. And once again, control shift left bracket and control shift right bracket. And yes, I'm hitting undo in between. By the way, when you cut a clip at the playhead, the frame you see in the viewer belongs to the clip on the right of the cut. So if you want to end on a frame, you have to go to the last frame you want to end on, then move one frame to the right, then cut. Let me clarify this with the following example. If you want to end the clip on the left, on the last frame of the dark colored scene, when cutting, it's best to consider what the viewer shows as the frame included at the start of the next clip. So in this case, the start of the next clip is this light colored scene. Cutting here separates the dark scene from the light scene as predicted. To say this yet another way, cutting prioritizes separating the clip on the right from the clip on the left by displaying the beginning of the clip on the right as opposed to the last frame of the clip on the left. Now for the real meat and potatoes of this tutorial. Some of these can be used on the Fairlight tab, while others, for obvious reasons, are dedicated to the Edit tab. Also, some shortcuts can be revealed as tooltips just by hovering your mouse cursor over the tool or right-clicking on assets. Most of the ones I'm showing are not functionally displayed. End toggle snapping on and off. D toggles deactivate or reactivate clips. Control click or command click adds to clip selection or removes from clip selection. Shift click selects a series of clips. Alt left click drag or option left click drag duplicates a clip. Shift left click drag constrains vertical movement.
Control Alt L or Command Option L toggles linking the audio and video tracks. You can see this command just by selecting Stacked Tracks and right clicking. Control B or Command B instantly cuts a clip at the playhead with the blade tool. If your audio and video are linked, the cut will be along the linked clip. If the audio and video are unlinked, this command will only cut the selected clip. To cut along the unlinked clip and all other clips along the playhead, just cut a second time. Also, you may want to turn on Selection Follows Playhead under Timeline in the menu bar. This is essential when you're cutting segments out without needing to touch the mouse. Here is how it works in practice. Let's say you want to start a cut here, and you want to delete the next few seconds. Just go a few seconds in, Control B, and then hit Delete to ripple delete the timeline or backspace to remove the clip but leave the space. This next shortcut is going to be one of few that does not exist in any stock installation of Resolve. It is a follow-up of the previous shortcut. I'll cut twice here and cut to everything along the playhead. Notice how I have to select the unlinked clips after cutting with the Control or Command B shortcut in order to delete them. To eliminate that mouse movement, I am going to teach you how to assign the command Select All Clips Under Playhead under Trim in the menu bar. This does exactly what it says. It selects the clips directly underneath the playhead. Now, I assign this command to my backslash key for convenience. You'll see why in an example. Here's how to create the shortcut key. Go to DaVinci Resolve, then choose Keyboard Customization. Under Commands, select Trim. Scroll down to the Select All Clips Under Playhead. Click in the box to the right and hit the backslash key for PC or Mac. You can choose any other key if you want. Then click Save then close. Here's how this works. I'll use this with the previous control or command B shortcut. I'll cut twice here and cut to everything along the playhead. Now I'll use the left button to move the playhead one frame so the playhead lies over the clips on the left. Now hitting the backslash selects them all. Now I can delete the unlinked clips. Whether you use this command or not, here's a word of caution. You have to practice using this with stacked tracks as in the following example. Cutting a clip causes the tracks above and below to collapse or ripple delete within the column that is being cut out. Normally you'd think that just the clips on the track will ripple delete, but that's not what happens. After you wrap your head around it, it starts making practical sense. As a follow-up to this shortcut, Alt Backslash or Option Backslash joins juxtapose clips from the same clip. It only works when the frames were originally in series. In other words, you can take a clip and cut it into ABC parts and join it back to AB, BC, or ABC. Shift S. This toggles audio scrubbing sound. This can also be toggled from the timeline on the menu bar and scrolling down to audio scrubbing. Alt Y or Option Y. This will select everything on and to the right of the playhead so you can move all the clips on the timeline to make space for something. This is ever so helpful. To select everything to the left, just add Control or the Command key, thus Control Alt Y or Command Option Y. M adds a marker to a clip if the clip is selected, or if no clip is selected by clicking outside a clip or after clicking the playhead, a marker will be added to the timeline. Notice when I turn off Selection Follows Playhead under Timeline, markers are placed on the timeline. But when I turn it back on, it places the markers on the clips. Control M or Command M. This adds a marker and opens the dialog box to add a name, notes, keyword, or color, as well as the option to remove the marker.
Alt M or Option M will remove the marker if it is selected. Shift up or down navigates through markers. Alt T or Option T creates crossfades between selected video clips. Shift T creates crossfades between selected audio clips. And Control T or Command T creates crossfades between selected video and audio clips. If you get this error while trying to apply fades, it's because you don't have enough trim at the endpoints of juxtaposed clips to crossfade between. Just trim each of the necessary clips and try again. If you want Resolve to do this trimming automatically, just click Trim Clips when prompted. Alt plus the scroll wheel, or Option plus the scroll wheel, will shrink or grow the timeline view. Control plus the scroll wheel, or Command plus the scroll wheel, will scroll the timeline sideways. Shift plus the scroll wheel will change the height of the audio or video track the mouse is hovering over. The following two shortcuts do the same thing. Choose whichever one suits your workflow. Control Alt plus the scroll wheel, or Command Option plus the scroll wheel. If you do this with the mouse pointer anywhere within the timeline, you will fast scroll horizontally by page. You can replace the scroll wheel with the side scroll wheel like that found on the MX Master 2S or 3S, or possibly a similar mouse if the same intrinsic function is programmed into that mouse. In fact, if your mouse has side scrolling built into the scroll wheel itself, this should work as well. Control Shift plus the scroll wheel, or Command Shift plus the scroll wheel. If you do this while the mouse pointer is on the timeline's horizontal scroll bar handle at the bottom, you will fast scroll horizontally by page. Again, if you have a side scroll wheel like that found on the Logitech MX Master Series, this shortcut combination works with the mouse anywhere in the timeline area. I and O sets in and out points at the playhead. This is good for looping playback on the Edit and Fairlight page. Use Control forward slash or Command forward slash to toggle loop playback on or off. Then use Alt forward slash or Option forward slash to start playback between the in and out points from the start of the interval. Press up or down to restart playback again from the starting end point. Then hit Alt X or Option X to clear the in and out points. X sets in and out points on the largest video or audio clip the playhead lands on. The first video track takes precedence to other tracks stacked or not. In the Fairlight tab, X works the same way. Experiment with this to understand the intrinsic behavior of this shortcut key. The letters J, K, and L represent backward, stop, and forward playback, respectfully. Pushing them repeatedly increases speed of the playback. And here is a list of extended J, K, and L shortcut keys. While not a shortcut key, you have the jog wheel here on the left, which lets you scrub through cuts instead of trying to scrub through cuts with the playhead when snapping is enabled. Control or Command J or L causes the clip itself to advance or shift position at playback speed in the timeline. Clicking J or L more than once speeds up the shifting. Up or down moves the playhead to the next cut across each track. Left or right moves the playhead one frame backwards or forwards. While holding the shift button, left or right advances the playhead by one second intervals. Control or command left and right navigates to select clips horizontally between edit points or cuts. Control or command up or down navigates to select clips vertically between endpoints or cuts. Control shift click drag or command shift click drag moves clips throughout the timeline, maintaining timeline coherence as other clips dynamically surround the clip being moved on the same track. This makes room to place the clip after a sequence. 
experiment to understand the behavior when using linked and unlinked clips, as well as clips above default video track 1. T enters you into trim edit mode. This lets you slip shift the video within the endpoints when you grab the upper part of the clip like this. What appears is the guide that shows you the start and ending frames of the select clip. When you grab the lower part, it slips the video while dynamically changing the in and out points of the juxtaposed clips to maintain timeline coherence. A puts you back into selection mode, which is the default mode. And that's it. Class is over. You now have a solid reference for the shortcuts that will give you more efficiency while editing. This may seem like a lot to take in, but I suggest to pick a couple keystrokes and integrate them into your workflow. After you master what those keystrokes do, then come back to this video and add another shortcut to your workflow until you figure out what set of shortcuts work for you. So as always, thank you for watching. And until next time, go capture that once-in-a-lifetime moment.